Okay, so this is now my notebook running on a GPU. It's, it's one of the P3 2x large servers. And let's actually go and implement an inception network and run it. So the first thing I have to do is, of course, you know, import all the appropriate libraries. And I've done that already before, so I can skip this. But here's the basic inception block. Okay. So this is the basic inception block now written out as code. And here we are going to encounter for the first time a parallel composition of various paths. Right? So this is now where we don't have just a simple, you know, add a block, add a block, add a block, but we actually have to do a little bit of work to instantiate this. So the first thing I need to do is I need to initialize the components. So I need for path one a 2D convolution of size one by one. For path two, I need a one by one and a three by three convolution. For path three, I need you know a one by one and a five by five, with again appropriate padding. For path four, I need a max pooling and a one by one. Okay, so these are all the parts up here that I first need to define. Now, I have some parameters, namely C1, 2, 3, and 4. And these are the parameters that govern the sizes, basically the number of channels for the various paths. So if you go back, these are the four paths, paths 1, 2, 3, and 4. There we are. Now, what I then do is I just, you know, code up P1 is, you know, P11 of x. That's path one of the input. P2 is, you know, P2 of 2 of P21 of x. Because I'm actually concatenating those two pieces, right? So I first apply a 1 by 1 and then a 3 by 3. For path three, I do the same thing for one by one and five by five. For path four, well, I have to add for, you know, max pooling and convolution. Okay, so now I have those four paths separately. And now I can concatenate it. So ND concat of P1, 2, 3, 4 along dimension one just stacks everything up, and that's now the output of that layer. Okay. So once you think about it this way, it's actually fairly straightforward. So if I wanted to modify that architecture of the inception block, that would be very easy. So remember, this will return a block with these parameters, right? with basically, you know, C1, 2, 3, and 4, and some other parameters that I might have. Okay, so now we need to define the various blocks. So block one, it's just, you know, sequential composition. And yeah, I know why, because I didn't actually run this. Okay, let me execute it. I thought I ran it before. Turns out I didn't. Okay. Uh, it's just, you know, the standard convolution and max pooling. Stage two is another few convolution and another max pooling. So that again reduces dimensionality. So right now I'm just defining each of those blocks separately. I haven't actually put them all together yet. Okay. Stage three, well, that's two inception blocks now, followed by max pooling. Stage four, well, some more of it. And now let's look at the actual numbers. So these 
last numbers are the output ch channel dimensionalities for each of those paths, right? See how they increase. The other thing is that the ratio between these different stacks changes over time. So first of all, the dimensionality actually of these one by ones increases quite a bit. And also of the one by one follow, three by three followed by one by ones. The five by fives, well, not so much. And the one by ones, not so much else. Just in the end, well, I get something that creates a fairly large dimensionality. Right. And then I reduce the resolution. Okay. So now I need the last block. <clears throat> and that just, you know, adds, you know, two more inception stages with in the end then global average pooling. And so now what I have is a network that I can create by having those five blocks, and then the end, just a dense layer with, you know, 10-dimensional output. Okay. There we go. Okay, so let's actually see what happens if I pipe some data through that. So to make life easier, I'm just picking 96 by 96 pixels because if I pick something that's too high dimensional, then it's going to take a long time, even on a small data set. Um, the reason why I only have one dimension here, that has to do with the fact that this is fashion MNIST, so they are black and white images. If I had CFAR, for instance, they would be, you know, colored. And they would be then three dimensions. So after block one, I'm left with 24 by 24. After block two, I'm 12 by 12, then six by six, three by three, one by one, and then 10 dimensions. So what you can see is that the fact that we started out with a higher resolution to begin with led to, sorry, with a lower resolution to begin with, namely only 96 by 96, led to only three by threes in the end. Remember on the slides, we actually had a seven by seven. Okay. So now that we have this, we can run it. So let's see. Okay, it's found out that, hey, we have a GPU. And now, It'll take about 20 seconds or so for each of those paths to go through. In the meantime, let's just, you know, review what's going on. So net initialize initializes the parameters of the network. You have to do that before you run. Now force reinit simply because before that we already you know, send some random garbage data through it and we initialize it at random. So we just want to make sure everything's fine. One important pitfall. Force reinit reinitializes the values of those parameters. What it does not do, and I found out the hard way myself, is it does not reset the dimensions. So once you've bound the network to a particular input size, you're stuck with that. Right? I mean, you can take pieces of the network and rearrange and do all sorts of interesting things. But at the end of the day, if you've once bound it to, let's say, 64 by 64 resolution images, force reinit will not allow you to then have it automatically adapt to 128 by 128. For that, you need to start with an architecture from scratch. The reason for that is actually quite simple in hindsight. Namely, if you, you know, if you reset the, you know, parameters, since the network doesn't know which of the dimensions were given by the user and which ones were automatically inferred, it cannot just go out, go and throw out everything that, you know, was automatically inferred and reinstantiate it. That's the main reason. 
So that's minor pitfall, so just be aware of it. In any case, this is inception, and well, we get a fairly respectable accuracy of, you know, about 0.88, right? So that's about 12% error on fashion imminence. So this is not bad. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So I guess it should become kind of routine by now how to train, you know, your favorite architecture because I mean that code is identical to the code that we've seen before. Just uh, yeah. We have a different architecture. <laughs>